Yo, Soji Talk Nation! On this week's episode, we'll be covering Fuego releases from Mamamoo, CL, and Stray Kids. We'll also be cooking up some spicy news coverage, including the SM Institute and Melon and Billboard announce new charts. So prepare your body, turn up the volume because we coming in hot. Hit me with that intro. What's up everyone, this is Soju Talk, your weekly shot at K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 104, and we're recording on September 14th, 2020. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren, who just hit his mic, or his hey, camera. What's, hey, what's up everybody? I can't hit it again! And Anita. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and as a quick reminder, check out Soju Talk on your favorite podcast platform, sub to the Soju Talk YouTube channel, and join the Soju Talk Discord and be a part of the nation. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Alright, in terms of quick announcements, um... You know, we've seen an uptick in viewership or downloads oh. Mm. Oh. in India, which is kind oh, of yeah. interesting. Hello, India. So shout out to all hey. of our Indian listeners. You know, we appreciate it. Like, it's been, it's been interesting seeing our numbers each week. So shout out to our Indian shout listeners. Out. Glad you could join us. Mm. But um, we are now at part one of Soju Talk episode 104, where we discuss big new releases, choose a spicy song king, and hit you with the music show winners Boom. boom. All right, boom. so we're only covering three, well, like two and a half songs this week. <laughs> let's be honest here. Um, The first one, September 10th, Thursday, we have Mamamoo with Wanna Be Myself. And then today on September 14th, Monday, we have two songs, CL's Post Up and Stray Kid's Backdoor. Let's start at the top, though, with Mamamoo's Wanna Be Myself. So they are from RBW. They debuted back in 2014. Last three songs were Hip, Gleam, and Go Go Bebe, 41 music show wins so far. And Wanna Be Myself marks Mamamoo's first release of 2020 as a complete group and was prepared as a special gift to their fans who have been waiting patiently. That was kind. The song is also tied with an advertising deal with Andar, which is a sportswear and accessory mm. brand. And it is sort of similar to last year with their song Gleam, which, mm. in which they promoted this glasses, glasses chain, I believe. So that's the basis of this song. But what did we think of Wanna Be Myself? Well... Do I want to buy a pair of leggings now? <laughs> I think that's what you should be asking yourself. I agree. When I first watched this music video, because I, I had only heard the first part where, like, this is a special gift to the fans who've just been waiting around, so it's not, mm. like, an actual comeback comeback. Mm. And I was watching the music video, I was like, why is that one, like, like <laughs> the one wardrobe so casual? Like, that's what I was wondering. Mm. Like, Hwasa was in, like... Yeah, the pastel and Hwasa was in sweatpants. I'm like, what's what's going on here? I literally thought like maybe they just because they want to be themselves. Maybe oh, they just wore their own clothing to the shoot. That's literally <laughs> what I thought the first time through. But then I then I finally did some research with some help from people on the Discord. And they're like, no, it's a it's a sportswear brand thing, and it made so much more sense, especially mm. the scenes with Solar where she's literally just yeah. posing in mm. yoga wear. Right, right, right. But in terms of the song. I liked it. I thought it was more of like mm. a callback to some of the, what I call like classic Mamamoo sound. Mm. I thought it was more more like that instead of their more recent songs, which I, I liked. But I don't think it's their best song ever by any stretch. Mm. Uh, the thing with Mamamoo is, right, like they, we have the classic era Mamamoo, Mamamoo and the, mm -hmm. mm. the newer era Mamamoo. And one of the defining features of the songs that come out of the classic era Mamamoo is like... They, they have a very specific melodic structure, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. Koreans like to use the word, "bonky," uh, "bonky," okay, "bonky." It's it's a "bong" feel, "bong" vibe, and by "bong," mm. I'm talking about inspired by trot. You know? Ah, ah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there's a lot of and and, and that those kind of melodies bled into um, modern pop music, um. And not a, and a lot of hit singles, a lot, a lot of hit songs, uh, kind of follow that melodic structure, and it, it's kind of like what keeps K-pop, even though they use a lot of uh, you know Western uh, production. That's what sets them apart, really. The thing is, Mamamoo leans into it very, very hard because that's the produce. That's what their producer likes to do. Um, hmm. This song leans very, very hard into it. Uh, a little too much. That's a little too much. Um, <laughs> it it it's like mm, 
feels like there's too much garlic, which I don't say often. You know, <laughs> hmm. you can never go with a lot of garlic. You can never go wrong with a lot of garlic. Um, but this felt like it was a little too much in that direction. You know, hmm. especially I after just, we had. See your point. Uh, what? I can see your point on that. Yeah, especially after we had Hazal's last track, which. Mm. <sighs> Which really subdued a lot of it and found the right balance, I felt. Um, but this one felt a little too much in that direction. I'm not sure if you guys will understand what I mean by when I say punky, but... No, I, I do understand because when I listened to the song, I felt like there was a retro vibe to it. But I couldn't pinpoint it like, what does it remind me of? And it is kind of a older school pop that I feel. And I feel like mm. if Trot is the influence, then I, I kind of understand it then. But it, I don't know, maybe visually, it also incorporated something that felt very clean, like polished. Mm. Um, there was a, a part of the outfits, I don't know if they're part of the of the brand, Andar, but they had like white suit-like outfits that in was some great. of the scenes. That right? was great. And I thought it really fit them and it kind of called back to their older mm -hmm. style, I felt. Mm, very um, clean. Yeah, when they were beginning and they, they kind of had that. Uh, styling at the time with suits, high heels, uh, very very polished look. Mm. Uh, so it kind of felt like a mixture of of that, like pop, but with their retro sound from their very beginning. Mm. I don't know. I thought I thought it was interesting. It's one of the few songs that I've liked from Mama Moo as a whole mm -hmm. recently. I think. I, I do think if like you haven't liked the recent Mama Moo stuff, this will probably up your alley, mm. right? Cause... Yeah. Yeah, I I do think though, like compared one one thing that did stand out to me as a really big positive is the way they used uh, Pian in the uh, chorus. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For that sure. part was really really stand out for me. Like I think objectively, she gets the least amount of attention out of the four members of the group. I think mm. clearly, like the ones that are most famous are Hwasa right. and Solar, and yeah. then Moonbyul obviously like. Moonbyul with her whole like vibe gets a lot of <laughs> fandom and a lot mm. of people like Moonbyul and mm. then Wein's kind of there and sometimes she she's a little bit lost in the sauce but I also agree that she was like probably the critical sound of this song mm. specifically mm -hmm. in the chorus I thought she did a great job and one thing about the styling is that it felt very pastel right now yeah. Yeah. I know that this was probably filmed before the BTS thing but right now pastels are really in in Korea like it's mm. it's like the 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 main Fashion trend right now is pastel tones. This kind of fits that kind of perfectly, I believe. Um, I don't know where I'm going with that because you know I'm not very that I'm not that fashionable, you know. But um, I mean, <laughs> I'm looking at the Andar website right now. Mm -hmm. These are some nice colors, you know, like pastel in, yeah. turquoise. How did you feel that Moonbyul didn't have like a normal rap section but more sing rappy? Mm -hmm. I kind of because I I heard I heard some people saying on our Discord that they felt like something was missing because she didn't have, like, oh. typical Moonbyul rap thing going on. Uh, I mean, look, it's kind of on trend, right? Mm -hmm. Like, rapping really aggressively in these kind of songs don't make sense. It wouldn't make sense, right? Yeah. No, no. Y y imagine, imagine the wall breaks down and Moonbyul drops the mic with, like, blah, 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 <laughs> kind of a aggressive rap. That ain't gonna happen. Like, that shouldn't happen. This kind of yeah. felt really well, because, like, it was, like, a... It was very groovy, you know? Mm. It, it was like you know kind of thinking of, i was thinking about like haze in mm -hmm. her like 2015 ah, era yeah, and yeah. stuff like that you know groovy you know so um, an another thing i noticed it's like obviously this is a lower budget because this isn't technically like a real comeback right and i i very like i don't know i'm fascinated by the fact that mamamoo does these advertisement songs like they're like the only people who like explicitly other than like the pepsi stuff but that's like its mm. own thing. I know BTS does like collab tracks, but it's like literally like BTS X like Hyundai or whatever they're doing, right? Right, right. This is like more subtle, but at the it same is. time, people know what's going on. So I don't know. It, it it might just be RBW trying to get more money, and it makes sense, right? I mean, from let's let's say we were an advertiser, right? Let's mm. say we're looking for a you know a, our model for our newest uh, pair of yoga track pant suit thing mm -hmm. um then we want to target the right audience mm -hmm. mamamoo has a lot of female fans right now in korea yes right. so i think i think that would totally make sense like Hwasa, dude like do you, know. you prefer to be subtle like this though or do you want it to be explicit the advertising because that is an issue in korea right now subtle it, advertising versus explicit 
Oh, I mean that's a little different, though, right? Like I agree. Yeah, right. That right. That's scenario. that's the difference that you, for, for the for context, right? Like there was a whole bunch of YouTubers. Uh, there was a scandal recently mm-hmm. where they mm-hmm. were, uh, you know, being paid for videos as advertisement, and they weren't disclosing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a little bit of a different situation. Mm-hmm. I feel like because the song isn't like all oh, and are right like right. No, yeah but gleam was kind of heavy-handed okay I gleam, that was a little <laughs> yeah I, I see what you mean i see what you yeah mean. yeah i'm okay with this though um you know we had three solo songs this year from mamamoo right we had um Moonbyo had one hwasa had one and solar had one all within 2020 mm-hmm. sorry we and she they didn't they didn't give, give her one right but um mm-hmm. I was kind of wondering, like, is Mamamoo still going to exist as Mamamoo? Because they have all kind of started doing their own things on the side. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Solar has this extremely popular YouTube channel that I think is like at two over two million um, subscribers oh, or something like that. Man, oh, geez. I'm gonna look that up real quick. Um, I mean, but Hwaza has a very successful solo career right now. Of course, too. variety wise, yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, I, I, but I don't think Mamamoo is gonna go away anytime soon. I feel like. No. I, sure, I feel like, you know, Haza has a very strong solo brand identity, you know, but. Yeah, do you, do you, do no, you, see. like, I just think it's kind of weird that, like, oh, so I believe Solar has, yeah, 2.3 million subscribers, which is nuts, wow. right? Mama Moo's YouTube page has 4.3. She's, like, half that amount already. Wow. Oh, man. But. I hope that they do do more, like, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the more recent tracks being, like, Hip and Gogo Baby, I like Mamamoo as 4. I still think mm-hmm. that's very viable, still a big thing, still a top-tier girl group. Um, mm-hmm. I'm hoping that the next release, maybe within the next four or five months, is, like, an actual, like, full-on comeback. That's that's mm-hmm. my, my wish, I would say. Yeah, I mean, you know, it makes sense. You know, everyone does their little solo thing, comes back into one unified group, and you yeah. know, do their group thing. You know, that they're establishing themselves in two ways as solo artists and as a group, and that's really good. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on to the second song. September fourteenth today on Monday, we had CL with Post Up. So her company is like a mystery right now. Like oh. she's distributed by Cacao M, I believe. Mm. But the thing that if you look it up, it says that she's in Sunny V, but there's no details about that company really. Um, but she made her debut back in 2009 with 21, and then 2013 as a solo artist. Her last three songs, well, last four songs, all happened last year. You remember they were Paradox, I Quit, mm. Done, and Rewind. Mm. One music show win so far, and Post Up is a pre-release track. So let's get that clear. Mm. Um. The run length of this song is very short. I think that's the most obvious thing first. It, right. it runs about two minutes and change, which is extremely short. Mm-hmm. That being said, I thought it was some of the most fuego two minutes I've seen in a while, <laughs> right? Like It was great. It was, it was everything I want from a CL thing. And I, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the last four songs she released last year. I thought they were okay, but like this mm. is this is what I want. Like when she said like I go by the name of You Know Who I Am. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh she here. There she goes. I was like, oh, she here. <laughs> oh, she here. Oh. She here. But what, what were you guys' initial impressions of this one? I think this was great. There's nothing to criticize. Well, there's nothing oh. wrong with the track. This is, like, pretty I, much perfect. Wow. I kind of agree with you on that. Like, okay. The rap, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. I got I to gotta talk about rap real quick. My philosophy on rap design is that it is supposed to be groovy you know you might be p- the type of people that who prefer very aggressive flashy kind of rap um but i think you know uh, busta rhymes has his own market mm-hmm. i wouldn't classify his rap as my favorite kind of rap because it's very difficult on the ears it's very aggressive mm-hmm. you know not a lot of re- re-listenability very not groovy um here we have cl being the right amount of aggressiveness laid backness we, we end up with a very nice groove and a very nice flow that kind of consists throughout entire all of her verse that is how you rap ladies and gentlemen the bar has been set it, <laughs> is this is how you do it and the beat is so fire yeah 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 the beat Whoo! You know, um, I thought that the co- costumes were nuts. Yes. I really liked it. It was like the 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 styling of the music video was crazy. Mm. She did some choreo at the end, like that was great. That was great. Now, I'm almost positive this is a pre-release. Don't yeah. She said I'm dropping this before the release of my album. Okay, so so it is one of those. Uh-huh. 
you know how last week I re- or a couple weeks ago I don't remember when we talked about pre-releases, right? And I was mm-hmm. not like a fan of them. Yes. If you do something like this, this is yeah, this is yeah. what we want. Because <laughs> I am now like I I've been waiting for this CL to reemerge, and mm. this is a pre-release has got me so excited for the full album that's eventually going to come out. Mm. Oh my goodness, this was this was a this was really good. Now my issue like less is more here. Like, I, I initially turned on the music video. I'm like, two minutes. What the heck is this? I even wondered if we should cover this because it was short, right? Yeah. Yep. And then I listened through it a couple times. I'm like, this is just, like, magical. There's not, <laughs> This is um, so efficient. There's no, like, excess BS going on, oh, no, right? Yeah. Right. She did, she did her thing. She rapped a bunch. She, like, danced a bit. She made references to 21. And she's like, I'm out of here. See you with the full album, right? Like, get hype. Right, that's wow. my. That's why I'm thinking about all the people who are saying the song is too short. And I'm like, did mm. you pay attention to the thing? Like, <laughs> yeah. if this was longer, that would be way too much. This is the right length. She said everything she wanted to say. She showed everything she wanted to show us. There was a mm. lot of visual flair. There was a lot of musical flair. What more do we need? Like, sure, we can add a chorus. You know, mm. sure, we can add a second verse. But I, that w- at that point, that would be like... It's, you know, repeating herself over and over again. That's not yeah, necessary. And, and I think given the frame that it is a pre-release, this is the perfect way to do it. Like, right, right, mm-hmm. right. I, I sometimes things with like a pre-release is like, you don't need, like, you know how there's like a little 30 second teaser and then there's a full song. This falls somewhere in the middle. Sometimes that's all you need in order to get the fans hype enough for the, right, the, right, the big right. release. Mm-hmm. And I think this was a master class. Whoever, whoever is managing her, I know she probably has a big say in it now, but like oh, yeah, yeah. the decision making was on point with this one. Mm. Go check out CL's post up. If if you don't know who <laughs> CL is, she is legendary, and this is like the perfect personification of her as a as like a character in K-pop. I would say, she 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 she's she's, uh, she's badass. Oh yeah, just, she's just, the baddest. She is the baddest, <laughs> bro. All right, let, let's move on to the last. Song. Do we have any other closing remarks about CL? Going once, going twice, sold. Okay. We're at the final song this week, probably the the most anticipated one of the week. Um, We have Stray Kids' Backdoor. They are from JYP, debuted 2017. Last three songs, God's Menu, Levanter, and Double Knot. Two music show wins. Is it only two? I swear it's more than that. I'm going to have to look that up while we're talking. um, No, no, I can look it up. You guys can talk. Stray Kids recorded over 300,000 pre-releases of In, which I believe is the repackage of Go. And they sold 200... So that is pre-orders in terms of what's going to the merchants. And then they did... 121,000 first day sales, which is more than double the sales of Go and what it did on the first day. So they are exponentially mm. rising at this point. Uh, to confirm, they did have uh, only two music, music show wins, uh, both on M Countdown. Uh, feel, first I, with Miro and then like, second with Levanter. I feel like they should have mm. more. Uh, maybe that's they just should. me. should. But look, okay, backdoor. I will. Okay, I got I got a bunch of weird things to say. Let me start <laughs> off at the front. Um, I think Stray Kids, right now, on September 14, 2020, mm-hmm. is my favorite boy group in K-pop. Ooh. It's either wow. them or TXT wow, wow, wow. Are, are, one of, like, are my favorite guy group right now. Interesting. That's a bit of a take, right? That's, wow. Additionally, That's a strong take. My bias in this group, I think, has has switched since God's <laughs> Menu. It's a it's a it's a tight race now between the boy Felix, of course, Deep uh-huh. Voice, Australia uh-huh. Gang Gang Gang, do 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 whatever, and then <laughs> the the guy Hyunjin, right? Ah, uh, you know mm-hmm. Hyunjin got the purple the pink hair. I don't know if I'm the biggest fan. We could talk about the hair a little bit later. <laughs> um, he kind of has a Yeji look going on. A lot of people right. say he and Yeji look alike. And maybe if I just like Yeji and Hyunjin, it's the most efficient way to go about my fandom, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I was thinking. You like, like people with that specific eye? I guess I do. The people who look like How, how to Train Your Dragon, you know? Maybe that's the type of look I like. Um, <laughs> but additionally, I think he stood out a lot in the song, so that's why I like mm-hmm. it. Overall for me, though, in terms of the song, not as good as God's Menu, but I still think it's very good. Mm, okay. Mm. Why, why would you prefer God's Menu over this in specific? Something about God's Menu just gets me way more hype. Like, oh, so this God's doesn't add hype. I don't think it is. Mm. I would agree with that. Not as hype. More, I feel like it's. Uh, I want to say. Oh my gosh, I can't remember the title of the track, but it was very, very heavily EDM. 
mm-hmm. and it was not a the, the track. No, no, no. The they did a previous track. Mm-hmm. God's menu. No, no, no. Uh, a couple like, uh, what was it in the fall of last year? Earlier in the fall. Oh, of last, last year. year. Last year. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was very, very heavy EDM in the chorus, right? Um, and. I don't know. I feel like this was reminiscent of that a little bit. Maybe not as mm-hmm. intense, but it it was very very heavy on the EDM vibe. And I think I realized that that's not really the type of sound that I like from Stray Kids. Although they do use it a lot, I feel like this was one of those cases where I felt like a little too much. And being a continuation, I guess, to God's menu, it felt like it the energy went down, like Doug mentioned. Mm. So I I, mean, I, I don't yeah. know. We had God's menu, right? If we had more energy from there, It'd be that much. would be too much too energy. Much. <laughs> you know, stuff your burrito correctly. That's too much stuff in your burrito there. Um, look, personally, mm-hmm. I think this song. I I know I no, I I see what you guys mean though, right? Like it's not full on like hype, but at the same time, it's not like groovy either. It's kind of like in between. But, like, it's in between as in it doesn't fully commit to both. Um, and it kind of goes back and forth in, in not the most uh, well-formulated ways. Like, the transition Ooh. into the drop felt a little sudden, to be honest. Um, and parts of that felt like it was because of the mix. Um, where it where they decided to go very minimal. Um, and the bass itself was very minimal, too. Uh, very quiet. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a decision I would have made, but whatever. Um, and it, all of that combined, it did feel like... Not, it did feel like it was missing a little two percent. You know, it, it felt like we were almost there, but we didn't didn't fully get there. That being mm-hmm. said, the mix on the music video and the mix on Spotify is different. Is it? Oh, okay. very very that. different. The music video is very mono, as in like you're getting a lot of sound over here in the middle, and mm-hmm. then if you go on Spotify, it's a full width, like actual. Mm. Um, it's better mix. on Spotify, in your it's opinion. Way better on Spotify. It's I oh, I would shit. say it's a lot more better to listen to uh, on Spotify here. I don't know why it's different. Maybe maybe it's it might have been my computer. Honestly, that's why I'm thinking it because it does sound very weird. Um, so in places. In terms of the EDM sound during the chorus, that that the drop right. Yeah. People are saying it sounds like a slowed down Martin Garrix animals. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's what people are saying it sounds yep. like, it's like a similar sound effect. Um, and I, I was thinking of the of the title track, Side Effects. That's what mm-hmm. it was called. Uh, where it also had that Martin Garrix sound in the chorus, very very heavy, like a drop ish type of sound. But I don't know. I guess I'm not a big fan of that for Stray Kids. I much prefer their more hype. God's menu type of sound. Double so, <laughs> in terms in terms of the similarities, that's who I I would I'm going to assume that the the cinematography people whoever are doing the shooting and the editing is similar to God's menu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yes. that style that they have going on like consistently now Very across cool. these two releases is so different and cool compared to yes. like most people's music videos. Just the the styling of the way the camera moves, mm-hmm. the editing. Something about it is just so cool and so distinct to them right now. It's like it's like the like I know they have a musical flavor, but it seems like their videos now have a f- Stray Kids flavor too now. Which I'm I feel really like they've into. been. I feel like if it, it's one thing if they've been doing it since God's Menu, but I feel like it's been continuing for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I remember, like the what else, I remember we covered a Stray Kids song last year, and it it also involved people disappearing into like doors and nowhere and this has that too and like people disappearing and like flashing back in and i'm like oh okay so um okay let's talk about some hair decisions in this song (laughs) um (laughs) there's this guy uh bang chan that's his name yes they gave him one of the worst haircuts i've ever seen the guy with the red hair the short hair What, what did they do to my boy over here like god i don't know what they did with him um it took me a while to 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 palette Hyunjin's pink hair too. I think mm. that's not the best look in the world. Also, the Felix mullet thing, nice. uh, questionable, you know. But the uh, Bang Chan, yo, uh, <laughs> God, uh, if I was him, I'd be like, can we do something else, please? Like oh. make it a mohawk or something. I don't know. Is he also a part of Suri Racha? Cause he got Suri Racha for hair. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, that's that. Um, other other <laughs> things. 
Big um, picture stuff. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. If I'm going to... I think that Stray Kids is in the boy groups, the top three boy groups that are having the best 2020 so far. Mm. Okay. I, I want to say, obviously, BTS, right? Because they're mm-hmm. just doing crazy stuff um mm-hmm. i want to say nct 127 oh, yeah. and then i think it's stray kids in terms of the groups that i feel like are having the biggest like jump and the biggest accomplishment so far this year at least for me it feels like that because mm-hmm. not only is stray kids have two releases right now but they're i'm pretty sure they're confirmed to have at least one more by the end of the year oh man wow, wow. And just my, I know like um, obviously Stray Kids does not have the numbers of like NCT 127 who sold over a million and then BTS sold like 6 million so far or whatever it is. But I feel like the the general perception of Stray Kids is improving so much in 2020. I would mm-hmm. definitely say that they're more on my map now. Like they're definitely yeah. Yeah. more on my radar. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 like, it's like that thing where obviously they're in a humongous company, right? JYP's mm-hmm. doing crazy things. It's like I think now that they have like a really solid formula as to what they know is doing well, I think it is clearly working because, you know, this is a repackage album. This isn't the main album, right? This is the repackage mm-hmm. of Go, and it doubled the first day sales. That says wow. a lot about how people view God's Menu and now Stray Kids as a whole, right? Yeah, that's crazy, mm-hmm. yeah. Additionally, some they just feel really talented when you watch the music yeah, videos, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. the choreo. Their choreo, choreo is choreo. nuts, <laughs> right? It was so interesting, right? They're doing these weird things, and I'm like, I don't think that works, but it's working somehow, right? Like, yeah. I need to comment more on that, like your overall feelings about the choreo and what they're doing yeah. in the music videos. I uh, will. I don't know. I think you you did touch on it about how it was carrying a lot of the visual aspects of God's Menu, like the transition mm-hmm. and camera angles, but choreo wise, it felt very different i don't know there's a part in the chorus where they're like going through like a line mm. right and then mm. they like switch sides and then there's like a bridge that they form with their arms i don't know I, it reminds me of the same kind of uh i don't know like the same kind of style that txt does right where their yep. choreo yep. is very unique um very interesting formations and i don't know i think they're doing something but more to the their flavor of music um so i find it very interesting I'm just like, I'm fully aboard the Stray Kids <laughs> hype train. Oh my god. They're getting a whistle today, you know? <laughs> I think everyone should get on the Stray Kids hype train. You know, get your God's menu out, open up the back door, you know, <laughs> untie that double knot, all of that stuff. Pour the pour doing? the three racha everywhere. I don't know. Just go ham Damn. with Stray Kids right now. Please do not pour the three racha everywhere. Not on your oh, hair. Bro, dude. pour it on yourself, you know, whatever you want to do. I don't really care. But bro, oh my Stray Kids. Woo! Ah, so hyped for them. Like, I, I do encourage you to check out both the music video and the streaming site for this track, mm-hmm. though. I will, been, yeah. I'm mm-hmm. listening to it right now. It's incredibly different. One is very wide. Wow. One is very not wide. Um, hmm. I wonder why that decision was. Yeah, I would encourage you to pause the podcast right now and go check it out. <laughs> but you got to come back, though, you know? Cause yeah, yeah, I hope you come, come back. Because we got right, some... Uh, Let's go. Let's let's go on to the other releases this week. So there's only two that we're actually going to talk about. Well, not really, but we're going to mention them. So we have Heartfelt with La Luna. So she is Yeun, who was originally a Wonder Girl, and then additionally we had Astros, Moonbin, and Sana. They had, uh, I think it's a unit track called Bad Idea. So those are the mm-hmm. two other releases this week. But let's move on to Spice King. So Spice King is a segment where each crew, each crew, each week, the crew will decide which <laughs> song reigns supreme. So, you know, we're going to evaluate the Soju chart, which consists of three songs in terms of song quality, spice, and listener fatigue. So songs that place number one on the Soju chart will be declared this week's Spice King, and songs that win Spice King three times will gain entry into the Hall of Spice and be removed from the Soju chart, which is relevant this week, right? Mm -hmm. So on episode 103 last week, BTS's Dynamite pick up their triple crown, so they are now in the Hall of Spice, and they are not for contention on the Soju chart anymore. Congratulations. Second place was Day 6, Even of Day, Where the Sea Sleeps, and third place was Taemin's Criminal. But the candidate this week, candidates this week, obviously are Mamamoo's, Wanna Be Myself, CL's Post Up, and Stray Kid's Back Door. What okay. do we want to do, guys? Let's talk about this. Hmm. Alright, so, to reiterate, BTS Dynamite is no longer on the ranks. Correct. Correct. It is so, not eligible. You cannot put it on this chart anymore. Okay. So let's talk about 
number two and number three real quick, or potentially previous tra- uh, week's tracks first. Because mm-hmm. we had day 16 of day. It began a third place. Then yeah, I made correct. the hard argument that it should go up. You know? mm-hmm. yes. And you, you removed Not Shy, which people are I, not happy about. Uh, What's up, Bagel? Oh, How so you doing, sorry, man? sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, people are not happy about What's that. What's up, oh, I'm in um, Look, I, 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 I do feel like Day 6, even of Day, uh, where the sea sleeps, does have a great amount of re-listenability. Lots of, mm-hmm. you know, things to go back into. I don't think it would be fitting to put it in first place, though. I am I starting to get a little with- tired of it. I agree with that, not because like I don't think the song is worthy of being first place, but if you factor in that it would be the third week of this song on the chart, mm-hmm. I just feel kind of uncomfortable putting a third week song in first place. Mm-hmm. That's like my mm-hmm. main feeling. What about do you do you agree with that, Anita? Though, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm happy that it made it so far. Mm-hmm. Like the the having it as second for the chart, I think. Mm-hmm satisfies where i think like, yes definitely listen to this and you can listen to this multiple times but i i don't know if it deserves or if it should be in first place at this point i, I feel I, like I, if, if it ended up in first place it would be by default not because it should be right hmm. I, I that's how i think about it well I, I do think it's possible for a song to go up in rank every week mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i don't think this is that song though Okay, I think that's fair. Yeah, I, I think song. if a song does have um, a, it, are, there definitely are songs where it gets every better every time you listen to it. Mm-hmm. This to me is okay. We're we're we slowed down enough to the point. I don't think it should get there. Um, all right, let's talk about this week's songs. Yeah, I think. Oh wait, Marvel, are we keeping Tame and Criminal? That that's what I was gonna get to. Oh okay 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 okay. <laughs> Candidates for this week: Mama Moves, Wanna Be Myself. I don't think any of us would argue it should be on the chart. No, right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think just because of the nature of the song, where it's kind of just like you know, it's we're it's waiting a, it's for that song. comeback. Yeah, we're waiting oh. for the full comeback. <laughs> okay. The other two songs, though, I think you could make arguments for. Um, I'll tell you what I want to do first, and then you guys could express your opinions, and then we could come back together. Okay. Although I don't think Backdoor is better than God's Venue, I still think it's very good. Mm. I want to put Backdoor number one. I want to leave day six even of day where the sea sleeps at two, and I want to put seals post up at three. Now I think the seal thing is fire, right? But I think you need we need to dock it points because it's a it's not a like a full length it's not a, like a full Pre-release, track. Yeah, mm. that's why? what I want to do. <laughs> why why I, should I, he be taking points off just because it's not a full track? I just don't feel comfortable doing that. To be honest, well. Mm. I, sir, I like to challenge conventions, open <laughs> horizon. Oh my god. I would propose, I propose. Yes. Stray Kids back door on first. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll agree with this so far. Uh, okay, okay. But CL post up on second and day six even of day on third. Okay, okay. I'm not opposed to this. What about you, Anita? Okay. Um, okay, I feel like I'm already outnumbered for number one, right? You want to put I, criminal one? No, outnumbered, outnumbered for number one with Stray Kids, right? Because you guys both. I mean, no, still tell us your opinion, though. Yeah. Okay, because I don't know. I I like Stray Kids. Mm -hmm. This song is pretty good too. Commend Mm -hmm. them for the the sound switch up and the music video and everything. I think it still has to grow on me. So I feel like if we place it on the chart, I wouldn't place it as number one. But I would definitely consider it to move up eventually throughout the weeks. Mm. So I don't think I would put it in number one, but I'm willing to concede if you guys both agree on that. Now, I <laughs> I wish Tim In could stay on the on the chart. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I don't know if I would I but I want I would agree that CL CL song post up mm-hmm. makes a great argument. Mm-hmm. Even with the the running time of under two minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm thinking of which which spot I would want criminal and post up to go under. Personally, with criminal, it, okay, yeah, yes, it it is a very heavy track. It is. It mm-hmm. it's a little too heavy for me. I have been fatigued. I felt like it um, didn't have a t- like even like last week. I said I I was like the one who was the coldest out of the three of us on that song. Mm-hmm. I I just 
I listened to it a couple times. It just doesn't have like the listen of Ticking power, the re-listen ability as like two kids did. Even though I wasn't a big fan of two kids either, at least I could listen to that one a bunch. I, I mm. think two kids was the perfect balance between having a lot of weight and then having mm. enough like um, re-listen ability. It's, Taming tr- criminal, I feel like leans a little too hard into like it uh, the the heaviness it has. So um, uh, Anita, which is great, but <laughs> from based on what you've said, are you arguing for day six and first Taman in second, CL in third? It seems uh, like you were. Yeah, you you never gave us the first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. Like, I would. I, mean, I don't know if I would give it to Stray Kids just yet, but I th- I feel I'm outnumbered on this. <laughs> the the thing here's the thing though, right? Like I'm thinking, sh- okay, backdoor Stray Kids. Honestly, for me, a little underwhelming. Not gonna lie. Honestly, I think that Not Shy's like if if they were both first week songs, I would put Not Shy over it. Same. Yes. Same. Same. If if <laughs> Not Shy was this week, definitely. But like yeah. that's. That's it's not, not though. Happened. This yeah, is right. one. This is fourth week. Not shy. It's this is like, relative. You know, mm. you gotta think about what's on the table right now, and between all the chess pieces on the table right now, Stray Kids backdoor goes the farthest. I agree. That's oh, why, yeah. even though for me it was a little underwhelming compared to God's Menu, I'm willing to give it first place. That's why. Me too. I'm sorry, Adida. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay bullshit. with that? Are you okay? Can you see yeah. why, though? Anita, no, 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 you, no, you could convince me that day six is first, though. You could convince me. She doesn't want to put it first, though, she said. <laughs> That's the problem. So I I guess right, by default, right. right? Okay. Let's let's agree on that one, Although, as difficult as it is. You're okay with that, Anita? Mm-hmm. All right. So the Spice King of the Week, first place, Stray Kids Backdoor with their first crown. Shout mm-hmm. out to Stray Kid. Straight now shout. we got to figure out second and third place. Um... We got three songs here, right? Day six, even a day where the sea sleeps, Taman's criminal, CL's post up. I I hard want to put post up on this somewhere. I, I would agree on them. On I that. would I have to argue post up for a second. It <laughs> knows what it wants to do, does it really well, and it's mm-hmm. the best it's there's nothing wrong with the song. <laughs> Anita, would you put it in second or third? It, it, um, it, it should be first. What am I saying? Concede. I would I would concede for second, but what are we talking about for third then? What are what are we? I at? I okay. I don't know which <laughs> which song would you drop between day six and Taman? Because I will agree with your decision regardless of what you say. Oh, um, I know what I'm gonna put on third already. I know what you want. <laughs> um, ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. I. See, I like both songs. I like both songs. So you're, 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 okay, you got, you got third week, Where the Sea Sleeps, second week, Criminal. That's essentially what you're arguing here. Right. Okay, which song did you listen to more this week? How about that? That's the, that's how we're going to do this. See. Or did you not listen to any of them? No, I, I did, I did, but I think it's kind of a little off because with day six, I saw a lot of the, the follow-up videos that did it, like a live performance, stuff like mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. Criminal also just recently had like a practice video that came out and like live performances are going to start. So I feel like I have been listening to Criminal, but oh, she said a but. I think it's but. decided, guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to think. I have I listened to Day Six more in the long run than I can imagine. I would listen to Criminal. Okay. I think that okay. settles it, guys. Yeah. Settled. Sorry, Adina, we were pulling teeth on this week, but um, <laughs> all right. So it seems that the Soju chart for episode 104 is in first place. Stray Kids is back door, picking up their first crown. They are the Spice Kings this week. Shout Second place, days. we have CL with post up, and third place, we have Day Six, even of a day where the sea sleeps. Let's go! Shout out to Stray Kids. What's up? But um, all right, we're now at show winners. Anita, hit us with them. All right, so on Tuesday on the show, Lovelies Ob- Obliviate? Is that how we... Obliviate? Ob- Obliviate. Obliviate. Obliviate? Ob- Obliviate? Yeah, Obliviate. Yeah, Obliviate. Yes, right. their song that had song. Its, its first comeback, its first win for the comeback, Ooh, so congrats to them. And then on Wednesday on Show Champion, BTS's Dynamite had its seventh win. 
following on Thursday on M Countdown, Itty's Not Shy had its fourth win. Mm-hmm. And then wow. for the rest of the weekend, so Friday on Music Bank, Saturday on Show Music Core, and Sunday on Inkigayo, BTS is Dynamite swept up the award so they're up to 10 wins for wow, dynamite wow, wow. and that makes for inkigayo it made them have a triple crown and mm-hmm. the 100th career music show win wow yeah that's significant that's i think that's um big. i think i want to say there's only three groups that have passed the 100 i want to say it is girls generation xo and now bts but i could be wrong wow mm. for but from my memory correct me if i'm wrong but i think that's what it is but mm. Dynamite also, also broke the record for the longest time with a perfect all kill on September 14th, which is today, by surpassing the previous record of 330 hours by a, by Zico's Any Song. Wow. So Ooh. basically what that's saying, so you know perfect all kill, you basically got to be number one on everything, right? Weekly mm. charts, real-time charts, all that stuff. They have been sitting at number one for over 330 hours. Wow. wow. That is a lot of time. And it's still wow. counting? That's crazy. Yeah, so it's crazy. But, um... We are now at the end of part one of Soji Talk episode 104. If you are listening to the audio version, sit tight. And if you are on YouTube, head over to the episode 104 part two video. We'll be back after a short break where you can listen to Anita's ad. Three, two, <laughs> one. Hey.